Good morning. This is Agashwani Kohima. The morning news read by Jonas Yantan. Campaigning for the first phase of Lok Sabha elections ended yesterday evening. Voting in this phase will be held in 102 constituencies spread over 17 states and four union territories on Friday. All parliamentary constituencies of Arunachal Pradesh, Meghalaya, Mizoram, Nagaland, Sikkim, Andaman, and Nicobar Islands, Lakshadweep, Puducherry, Uttarakhand, and Tamil Nadu will go to polls in this phase. Voting will also take place for 12 seats of Rajasthan, 8 seats of Uttar Pradesh, 6 seats of Madhya Pradesh, 5 seats each in Assam and Maharashtra, 4 seats of Bihar, 3 seats of West Bengal, 2 seats in Manipur and 1 seat each in Chhattisgarh, Tripura and Jammu and Kashmir. 1,625 candidates are in the fray for the first phase of the Lok Sabha polls. In Nagaland, three candidates are in the fray for the state's lone Lok Sabha seat. The Nationalist Democratic Progressive Party, NDPP, has reiterated its appeal to all the electorates of Nagaland to participate in the exercise of the Universal Adult Franchise on April 19. The NDPP also appealed for peace and tranquility so that voting can take place in a safe and smooth manner in each and every polling station across the state. The NDPP further directed all its members not to resort to any means of force, violence, coercion or confront any section of society during the election day, stating that the aspirations of citizens must always be respected. NDPP maintained that if citizens are unwilling to vote, it is their choice and actions to forcefully make them vote should not be undertaken in any manner. The NDPP also congratulated the first-time voters and assured the entire machinery of the Election Commission of India its full-fledged support in this ultimate code of democracy. Further, it extended its gratitude to the people of Nagaland for the overwhelming support it received in every nook and corner of the state. The Nagaland Pradesh Congress Committee, NPCC, has urged every voter within the state to come out of the comfort of the homes and take part in the electoral process by exercising their constitutional rights on the day of poll tomorrow. It said that the right to vote is not just a privilege, but a basic human right and a cornerstone of our democracy, allowing citizens to have a say in who governs them and how they are governed. The NPCC also added that it has always upheld the sovereignty of the Constitution of India and has always encouraged every citizen to uphold the democratic principles and values that emanates from the Constitution. The NPCC further reiterated and appealed every eligible voter in the state to exercise their constitutional right on the day of the poll and make a difference by voting for a leader of their choice for a better future. Eastern Nagaland People's Organization, ENPO, has made a sincere appeal to the 20 legislators from Eastern Nagaland to honour the decision by remaining indoors on the polling day and abstain voting in order to prevent any untoward incidents. In a letter to the 20 legislators of the Eastern Nagaland, ENPO expressed a firm belief that the elected members would choose to remain indoors and honour the decision of the citizens of Eastern Nagaland to abstain from voting for prevention of any untoward incidents. However, the caution that there could be a public commotion if the elected members decided to go and cast their votes. The organization also said the decision should not be taken lightly as it represents the collective voice of their community, echoing the shared grievances and concerns regarding the neglect and disregard shown towards the region's welfare and aspirations by the successive governments. ENPO asserted that by honoring the people's decision to abstain from participating in the election, the 20 legislators would not only demonstrate solidarity with the aspirations of the citizen of Eastern Nagaland, but also reaffirm its commitment to the principles of democracy and popular sovereignty. The Sangalp State Hub for Empowerment of Women, SHEW, Mission Shakti, under the Department of Social Welfare, conducted a one-day state-level training for the personnel under women and child development control room, comprising 181 women helpline and 109 child helpline at Mission Shakti office, Kohima, on Tuesday. During the meeting, detailed deliberations were held 
on the nature of cases received. Child Helpline has catered to over 200 cases in the last six months, and the Women Helpline has catered to about 80 cases in the last one year. Standard operating procedures, constitution and legal provisions for women and children and welfare schemes under the Government of India were presented by the state team of Mission Vatsalya and SHEW Mission Shakti. With that, we come to the end of the morning news. Have a nice day.